now i am continuing the last lecture we already discussed in the last lecture is we derived formula for the taylor series method for, we are determined the numerical solution for the ordinary differential equation so for that we already discussed the taylor series method so in the taylor series method so there is an error that error is called the truncation error okay that error is called the truncation error so see here so about x equal to xn so infinite series can be written as so like this about x equal to xn infinite series taylor series infinite taylor series about the point x equal to xn of the function y, y equal to so y of x about the function is y equal to x y is function of x okay so y is function of x y is function of x so that function we have series, expanded series x1 the taylor series x1 the taylor series x1 is representing in the equation 1 so in the taylor series x1 we have infinite number of functions so we see have first order, second order, third order, fourth order derivatives of the function y. Okay. So y of x n is four one by one factor, first derivative at x n, and second h4 two by two factor, second derivative at x n. So h4 p by p factor, it's a p to derivative at x n, and so on. And so on. That means the next term will be h4 p plus one and y p plus one to derivative at x n at x n by p plus 1 factorial so p plus 1 factorial so these terms are equal to the infinite number of terms and next so p the order so p the order is represented with the equation 2 that is y n plus 1 equal to x n so y n y x n plus h4 1 by 1 factorial first derivative at x n and so on h4 p by p factorial y p the derivative at x n so this is the taylor series at the finite order Okay, is the infinite order. So next, in Taylor series method, error of formulation is given by that the error is y of x n plus one minus y n plus one. So infinity terms minus we have taking the finite terms. So that finite terms. So when if they are taking the modulus value, we can get the error. So that error is we denoted the y x n plus one minus y n x n plus one equal to. So equation two minus equation one. Equation two containing the infinite number of terms. Equation 1 contains only p number of terms. So equation 2 is the part of equation 1. So equation 2 is the part of equation 1. So that means so automatically so those terms will be cancelled. So those terms will be cancelled. So that means y n and y n cancel next h41 by h41. So these two terms are same and opposite signs when we are putting in this equation. So automatically these two terms also cancel and up to h4 p terms will be cancelled. So rest of the terms are we can write here. So that is and so on h4 p plus 1 and up by p plus 1 factorial by p plus 1 the derivative at xn and so on and so on so this is also infinite series infinite series okay so this is also infinite series infinite series okay right so in that infinite series mm -hmm. so we call principal part so principal part means so principal point is so what is the leading term so that leading term is called the principal term okay leading term of the that infinite series is called the principal term so what is that leading term so this is starting one is the h4 p plus 1 p, h4 p plus 1 is the leading term so you can take that first term to the leading term so that is called the truncation error so it's called the truncation error so which is the truncation error yes z z is in between x n to x n plus 1 so because of so given nodal points are sample points are equal space with nodal points so for that equal space with nodal points so that z is in between x n to x n plus 1 because of we are taking the x n term and so next term is x n plus 1 so that's why that z is in between so these two terms okay so next term. so if you take the h is common to the so right hand side and they shift to the left side you can get the 1 by h into so truncation error 1 by h into truncation error is equal to the h4 p is equal to the h power p h4 p by p plus 1 factorial and y p plus 1 to derivative at z okay z in between x n to x n plus 1 so here h power p so the h power p is indicated the order of the given taylor series method that h power is indicated the order of the given taylor series method what is the h power that power is power is p so is called order order of taylor's 
method order of the taylor series method okay that is the order of the taylor series method okay so and also we can determine the higher order derivative terms also we can determine the higher order derivative terms so that means we know the differential equation in the first order is y of y dash of x equal to f of x comma y and initial condition is y of x naught equal to y naught so simply we will denote the y naught okay y naught means the initial value so in the first order derivative term we can determine the higher order derivative terms also by differentiating this equation okay so in the y dash if you differentiate the third term you can get the y second derivative and again differentiate you can get the third derivative so and so on and so on okay okay so what is the taylor series method is the taylor series method so is the formula for the taylor series method so what is that order that order is indicating the p so p is the order so the order is order is p okay so in examination so we ask determine the value of y of so numerical value y of 1.2 or 1.3 y of x n okay y of x so determine the y of x so that method of order is 2 or method of order is 4 method of order is 3 so that may ask so order is 2 3 4 means so you can replace p by 2 or p by 3 or p by 4 so that means so in this series so we will up to h power p so if order is 2 means we can take the only three terms order is one means we can take the word in two terms if order is four means we can take the five terms okay so we can take the h power p p is the order that p is indicating the order okay now 